Today I want to get started on the PyPlant monitor project by first setting up what's needed to interface with the Pi from my Windows machine and the coding environment we'll be working in. Now the first time I tried my hand at this project, in addition to being mostly unfamiliar with Python, virtual environments and IDEs and other tools that would have made my life much simpler were unknown to me as well. So I ended up writing all of the PySide Python script using Nano and that became a bit of a hassle by the time I needed to do a bit more troubleshooting. It's not that it couldn't be done, it's the, the entire project was completed that way, but it ended up taking up a lot more time than it necessarily would have. So this time around, with more comfortable self-imposed time restraints, I've spent more time looking at how to configure the environment that best suits the task at hand. The setup introduced here is by no means unique to Raspberry Pi projects, specifically using the GPIO, uh, which is the general purpose input-output uh, pins that we're going to be connecting sensors to. This can be applied to any Raspberry Pi workflow or in fact any other Linux based workflow that is ac accessed remotely via Windows. Um, the biggest difference between using Windows to talk to the Pi as opposed to Mac will be the software that we use for FTP and remote access on the Pi. We'll get into that shortly. So first, we need to have our IDE and Python installed on the Windows machine. Note that Mac has Python pre-installed by default, so all you'll need there is the IDE of your choice. Now, I've already installed Python on this machine, but I did so using Anaconda. So it's already installed Python with a number of other libraries. Now, Anaconda is great for data science and uh, machine learning workflows. So if that is the way that you intend to go, I'd highly recommend looking into it as it simplifies the Python installation steps on Windows. And it also includes a host of mathematical and data science related libraries by default. So it also installs Jupyter Notebooks for coding presentation and way more Jupyter Notebooks and Jupyter Lab sort of uh, web application um, but it's not only browser based you can obviously have it installed to your desktop if you wish to install python on its own um, you would do that from python.org but uh, i'm not going into that installation because it's covered exhaustively elsewhere on an internet near you so for the ide i've selected to install vs code um, microsoft vs code well because reasons Honestly, I won't have a need for the advanced plugins and features that are offered by VS Code or its rivals like Atom and Sublime anytime soon. Currently, my coding needs are quite basic. I found that Atom was perfectly adequate for my needs. I've heard from a bunch of people that use VS Code very enthusiastically as well. So, I mean, the level I'm working on here, the differences between them are not going to be glaring. If you disagree, well, let's fight about it in the comments. The last piece of the puzzle on the Windows side is to connect to the Pi remotely. So we need to use SSH, secure shell for this. We can either use Windows built-in SSH client or you can use something like Putty or another third-party um, program. So now that I'm able to SSH into the Pi, let's do so using PowerShell. And then we can install and configure what we need on the Pi side through its terminal. So the command would literally be to type ssh, type user at the name of your Pi. If you're connecting to it for the first time, it will ask you to trust the ECDSA key that's being shared by the Pi, um, which is a yes if you know what Pi you're connecting to or what device you're connecting to, that's uh, generally safe to do so. And then your password, pineapple belongs on pizza. We're going to install two components of Samba because Samba facilitates the um, file sharing and visibility that we need into the Pi from the Windows end. So we use a sudo apt-get command to install both Samba as well as Samba common bin. In my case, it'll run relatively quickly and tell me I already have it. So nothing needed to change. Once we have Samba installed, we need to go and edit the configuration file so that we set up the folders that we need to share on the network. So we're going to open with nano the configuration folder or configuration file inside of the configuration folder rather. And that configuration file is called smb.conf. So once that opens up, what we're looking for is to ensure that wins support is enabled. Um, so if that's commented out with a hash at the beginning of the line or it's marked as no, then you need to change that. Um, 
we also need to be sure that the workgroup name is correct so if you haven't changed your workgroup then it'll be the default workgroup equals workgroup but if you're not sure from um, either right clicking on this PC and selecting properties or from going to control panel system security and system you will be able to see your workgroup name and again the default will just be workgroup so make sure that workgroup is correct make sure that win support is yes and is not commented out now we scroll to the bottom and we're going to add a new share so here we're going to specify the path of the folder that would be that we're going to share and this obviously needs to be browsable and writable so we call it pi home and the comments that it's a pi shared folder the path to that folder being slash home slash pi and it's both browsable and writable the rest was left on default um, public equals no because privacy and yeah the rest is fine in its defaults so whatever you've changed make sure to save it and lastly we're going to change the samba password so for that we run another sudo command and say sudo smb password dash a pi and then specifying your new password but warm banana is for sociopaths you heard me so the dash a modifiers to specify which user we're changing the password for in this case it was for user pi now when we browse to the network on the windows machine to view the network computers and devices we'll see the raspberry pi sitting there would help if i put that on the correct screen so there if we go and view the devices on our network the raspberry pi is sitting there and the pi home folder that we've shared with all of its contents so now that's browsable inside of the windows file explorer now the last thing we need to set up on the pi is our virtual environment now i've wasted an hour or two of my life diving down the black hole to finding out the differences between venv virtual venv virtual env pi venv env wrapper and who knows what else but since venv is the default and recommended virtual environment solution circuit python 3.6 i'm just going to go with that as it's perfectly suited for the task at hand now you'll likely be running a version of python later than 3.6 already so you should have venv installed by default but we can confirm that by just running the apt-get command in any case which is python 3 dash venv space dash y in my case obviously already installed and once installed we're now going to create a new directory for our contained python installation and these packages to live in so essentially the the folder that our entire project is going to sit inside we specify the path in my case it might give me a warning about it existing already because it does just created it no questions asked so this creates a folder with its own bin containing python as well as a config file for the environment that we've created now in order to start using the virtual environment we want to activate it using the activate script so we want to go and change into our virtual environment folder we want to change into the bin folder inside it if you view inside you'll see there's a bunch of scripts one of them is called activate um, well a few of them is called activate but what you will run is just source activate and now you'll see that it changed to the left and it's now stating in parentheses pmvenv to say that the virtual environment is run since this is already active I could show you on VS code that this folder for instance it's a work I created it as a workspace myself but we could add the folder again just for sake of clarity 
but there we can look inside of the pi and our home folder and right inside of slash pi slash home we created a folder called pmvenv and inside of pmvenv there's the config the bin and all of the other folders that go with our python and i've already created a couple of python scripts which we'll be getting into in the next <coughs> installment So we also need to take the permissions of the folder and files on the Pi into account. It's not enough to give the Windows machine visibility into the folder that we're working with, but we need to be able to read and write within the folder from inside of VS Code. And VS Code interacting with that folder is not the same user that we are SSH'd into the Pi as, which is user Pi. So this is done using chmod commands on the Pi terminal. Now the commands to change permissions must obviously be run as sudo. And we're building the command. It can be confusing as read, write, and execute don't mean exactly what you would expect on Linux. So I've linked to a great guide on this in the video description. This one gives you a nice breakdown of uh, all of the different chmod commands and how to build the correct one that you're looking for. But in the interest of uh, saving time, do it this way. As a security best practice, you generally want to give the minimum permissions needed to get the job done to only the user that needs to do it. But since this is my private network and my Pi is not also connected to the main controller for the nuclear fission reactor in my backyard, I'm going to go with the carpet bomb approach and that is just to allow everything for everyone in my project folder. This should obviously be done with great caution in your own environment, particularly if you've not yet air-gapped your nuclear controller, you amateur. This is done with sudo chmod. Now, for which users? A means everybody. Everybody gets to write, well, no, write. <laughs> everybody gets to read, write, and execute on the pmvenv folder. Yeah. Alice dash L will tell us what the permissions of each of these are. PMVenv sitting here in the middle has read, write, and execute for our user. So we should be able to now actually create files inside of this folder even though we're using VS Code which is not the Pi user. So let's say new file dot Pi and boom previous couple of times I tried this I got a uh, permission denied error trying to create and that was due to those chmod permissions that needed to be done. So we now have everything in place to get started writing and testing the first scripts to interact with our sensors on the Raspberry Pi. Links to the guides and information that I made use of to get this far will be in the description below. Until the next one, keep learning things the hard way.